out. Okay, welcome to the tutorial about how to transcribe using DOT. Uh, this is part two, which is showing you uh, once you've done a basic transcription, then how you can go back over and over and what tools there are in DOT to revise and edit and make your transcript better. Of course, how one does that is often dependent on your own methods of working, but it's pretty clear that most of us have to go back over and over and over a transcript. And maybe one way to do is to focus on particular phenomena and then go back again over and looking at something else and keep improving. But if you try to do everything all at once in one go, then you can miss things. So let's say we've got a really basic transcript ready here. There could be a, there's a bunch of mistakes in here. Um, it's not a perfect transcript. So let's see what we can do. First, what we're going to do is create a new version of this because I don't want to corrupt this version here. Uh, I want to just show you that if you sometimes want to create a use it as a new version that you can then start changing in a different way, maybe focusing on new phenomena, adding details, and then keeping your original one. This is one thing that you can do now, but you don't have to do this. I could start editing this one. So I'm going to save as new transcript. Uh, I give it a name. Let's just say edit. We'll call it edit. And uh, I don't want the backup history. I say I, I want the checkpoint history. Um, in fact, there really isn't one, so I'll just get discard that. I want the transcript text, I want the sync codes, and I want the video cues, and I want to open it straight away. So let's do that. And we should have the same transcript. It's identical, but now it's called edit. So I'm going to edit the same one as if I was editing the original, and then I can just discard this one later. So what we need to do then is maybe just zoom in a bit here uh, so that we can see the, the waveform in the right way, and maybe we'll just zoom in a little bit more here on this so we can... Uh, see the video cues if we need to. So we're at the beginning of the transcript and of course what you're doing when you're going over transcript you can start at the beginning and just play through. Hey, yes, yeah. we're currently listening to the wireless mic that sh this uh, person here, this woman has here and we're looking at the waveform from the camera that we're looking at here. So that means you're going to hear pr pretty much what she's saying mm -hmm. only uh, and maybe what others around her are saying. But we can switch, we can choose another one here if we wish. Uh, let's just do that now. We'll choose the Insta360, which is the camera nearest to him. Let's go. And that's a much clearer because it's not the wireless mic, uh, which is a, um, sometimes soft and, uh, unless it's her speaking. So uh, what we can do is uh, jump around with the sync code so we can say go to where we want to do some work if we're not going running through from the very beginning. So it could be we want to hear, say again here, what is she saying here, P2? It's very hard to hear, but if we switch to uh, um, this is the wireless mic here, then if we listen to that, and let's play again, then we can hear much clearer what she's saying. Uh, what she's saying there. So uh, that allows us to focus in by jumping on sync codes to particular parts of the transcript because this is obviously syncing to the waveform. Uh, and then all of the videos, as they're all synced together, will jump automatically to a, showing us a different view on a different camera, maybe. So we can jump around and focus on things. So that's one resource that we can do. Uh, if we were working through the transcript on, say, looking at uh, stresses using underlines and loudness, and we start at the beginning, then we can just play. And uh, you can press the button here, or you can use the control space or command uh, N. On, um, on Mac to play yes, forward sir. and you can use obviously a shift with that same command yes, yeah. and that will then yes, yeah. play that part or you can use uh, control and uh, alt yes, yeah. and see yeah. that sets yes, up. Yeah. If you pause again and then I started off again with control alt and space or N on Mac we start again. Go, sir, go, sir, go. So I can set up repeatedly loops play them through and wherever it stops a new loop will start so it's a good way of working incrementally through a transcript just by using the keys you can see there all I have to do is keep pressing those keys uh, and uh, uh, if I just set one up and pause it it'll repeat and I can pause that and play it through at any point just by pressing the normal control space or command N you can just use the button here to deselect if you want, and if you want to stop it looping all the time, you can click here. So that allows you to sort of focus in and, and really figure out what's going on. Let's say we start here. We want to hear that uh, 
And maybe there's something else being said at that point. So that's me. That's um, maybe there's a little bit of overlap with the, at the end of class, or it's immediately afterwards, and we might want to correct that. Um, so uh, uh, there, there's there's a way of working through the transcript and jumping around and then playing little parts using the shortcuts, or you could just uh, use shift and drag, and you can set up a a, a loop. Uh, and then press the buttons here, but that's rather cumbersome and slow using a mouse. Um, one thing you can do is if you're making changes and we want to make some change, let's say uh, um, let's say we hear something in overlap here, and we just want to add that. So I'm just going to add the uh, a bracket and then put another one here. I won't do that in the translation, but we hear. And it's giving us a little warning. It's saying that you know you've got an overlap line, but here, but nothing seems to be an overlap. Let's say it is P2. He's actually saying something here. Um, so uh, I'll complete that, and then I'll add the auto. Um, on. You can see here it's saying some sort of problem about the overlap because we haven't quite finished it yet. And let's say we think she says something like this. Uh, what we need to do is just add a space there. It's, it's a bit ambiguous. And now it's not quite in the right place, it's not lined up, but if we click here, you saw the little light bulb came up, uh, we can fix that so it starts the overlap. And then we might want to say, you know, this is what it means in, in English. So there's a way of adding and, add and doing realignments uh, of overlaps as you start to add them when you start to hear new things to improve the transcript. And this was just, you know, I'm, this is not true, I've just added this just for example. Uh, I'm not trying to do a complete uh, new revision of this um, at this point. Uh, and that's a change. Yeah, I can save that and I can go to checkpoints. And if you've got checkpoints set up, it says, hey, there's some changes. Uh, there's something been done since last time. And uh, in this case, we'll just say um, edited. Uh, uh, I think we haven't set this up as an initial one yet, but uh, we edited. Uh, like uh, overlap, added overlap. Let's just say added overlap. And uh, if I just say create checkpoint, there we have that as an uh, as a change, and that's now the initial uh, uh, one. And if we make new changes after that, then we'll see those superimposed upon that um, first, because there were no initial checkpoints uh, yet done. So that's our first initial one. Uh, so, for example, let's say we actually hear it is a little bit uh, longer, and let's say that's the, and then we want to realign those, so we can click that and fix the realignments. And now, if we go and look at checkpoints, it'll say, okay, there is a change, and now we see that change superimposed on top. If you have Dope Pro, it will show this, otherwise, it, if not, then you will see this, which is the current version. And uh, if I just turn that on, you'll see we see those changes that were made, and I can say edited. Uh, lines. And this is 18 to 21. So it's giving some idea what I did and I can give any message here that I want. I'm just going to do that. And that's then a record of the changes that were made. Uh, and if I go back and have a look at this one, that was the initial one. And now if I look at this one and peek, coming back, there we see that change. And if we every single change we make, we could make a checkpoint or every now and again, Good to do it at a low level of granularity or high level of granularity, meaning many times. Every time you make some changes, then you can keep track of those changes and go back and look at them using uh, checkpoints. Um, then there's ways to deal with say you want to change more than one thing. Let's say you want to change uh, the speaker name or you want to change a particular word which you maybe have misspelt. Um, so, for example, Let's say R1, we prefer to call it uh, Res1. So I'm going to put here Res. Maybe it's a bit clearer, it's Researcher. So what we can do is select one and then choose Replace and change them. Or you can just right click and then choose Change All Occurrences. And they all get highlighted. And notice they're also highlighted in the minimap. And now you can edit those simultaneously. I can add in a E, S, and see they've all changed right the way through the transcript. So you can see easily if there are more cases further down, there aren't in this case. And now they're all changed uh, into Res1. And that's now the new name that's recognized. So that when we do an autocomplete, for example, if I just go to here and say 
start off with. Then there we have res1 all ready to autocomplete, so it's recognized that immediately as a change. Uh, we might also want to say, we want to do something around to see how many times that go is mentioned. Now go, you can see, there's a one uh, here and there's one down here and one down here. We could go down and have a look, it's saying there's one down here somewhere. It's near the, uh, should be highlight, it's not showing very good highlight here on this screen. But uh, there is an example somewhere here of go. It might be as part of a word. Uh, one way to do it is just choose again the uh, change all occurrences. Ah, and there we see it wasn't showing very well on the highlight. You can see there's one here and there's one here. Um, and uh, in this case, because if we look at find, we have this set up as whole words only. If we take that off, we see actually go is involved in other words. So I had already turned on here this show only uh, the uh, a, a, a whole word with these letters uh, in sequence. So we can see there, if I choose go, so this is just a quick way, you just do a right click and say change all occurrences, it will show you where those are. And now it should be much clearer there. There's one there and there's two there. Some of them, of course, have uh, prolongation. And uh, if the word, of course, has prolongation inside it, it won't come up. But there are ways in the advanced tutorials for using find replace of how to use what's called regular expressions to search for any permutation of a word, no matter what symbols might be inside, uh, um, because of stress, because of uh, laugh particles, for example, then it will still find all examples of that word. So there are ways to do that. But that's an advanced tutorial for find and replace. That allows us to, to make sure that we're getting consistent across the transcript or finding out examples, just checking did we do it in the right way. Uh, and it doesn't matter if there's an underline here. Um, or something at the end, like a prolongation. Uh, and then, of course, you can do a, the finds. You can do it through there, and you can say this is regular expression, and then this is a, a match case. So it could be we want to match the case, which means we lose this one with the capital G. And it shows you how examples, and you can move through them. So we can move through this way, as well as see them here highlighted in the mini map of the scroll bar. Very, very powerful to. Uh, to search, replace, to change all occurrences, to edit. And multi-cursor is a way to do that. So um, it could be, for example, that there is uh, um, some instance that we wish to change in two separate places. Let's say we want to change this one we think is wrong and this one. Then if I press Alt, I can click here and then we've got two. If it disappears, just press Escape and it will come back. And now I can move through those two and let's say it actually should be the maybe more correct form in Danish, uh, go, uh, not in a dialect form. And that's what we prefer for those two. They were actually not in dialect. Uh, and well, I'm chosen there. I've chosen the translation sub tier here and here, which of course would be clearly wrong. Uh, one, two, three, uh, start. Let's say we wanted to say start should be, should be better or um, proceed some other um, synonym then we can just add that here. So let's say proceed rather formal. And you can see 321 proceed has now been replaced because of this multi-cursor. So you can edit across multiple instances uh, at the same time. Um, and then of course you can adjust the video cues. So let's say we, you, know, you find that uh, a certain video transition uh, is not appropriate. You can just edit that just by clicking on it at that point. Let's say we don't want to see this camera view here. She's just coming around the corner. We'd like to see uh, another view, maybe from the main camera here uh, or from another camera on the table. We can just edit that and then choose which camera. Let's say we'll choose Panasonic and see if that's worthwhile looking at. Um, Oh, I've, sorry, this is going to be on this one here. On the uh, it doesn't change this one. It always works on the primary video, so it's my mistake there. You can see uh, that camera doesn't look to be particularly useful at all. So we'll just go back and change it back to what it was, which was the um, I think it's the Insta360 Pro, was it? No, it wasn't that one. It was maybe the one that's just around the corner on table two. This one here. Yeah, it was just her coming around the corner, which is the best one we want. It's this one we wanted to change, which we can change from here. There's the Panasonic, which is not a very good shot. It's showing the other group. 
could be we want to see the GoPro on the table, which is another view, but we're sort of missing her. Uh, it could be the Insta360, we want to see this and we have to zoom in and say, look at these two here. There we are. Um, that might help us. So uh, you can see we can edit uh, uh, the video cues and because uh, we've realized that we really have a different phenomena that we want to focus on. And uh, you could, of course, make multiple transcripts with wholly different video cues based on the same sync codes in the same transcript to show off particular phenomena uh, across cameras or audio mics. Um, and it may be you wish to edit the, the sub tiers, for example, you might, ENG might be, not be the one you prefer. Uh, that means any future ones will change, or you might want to add a new sub tier for a different translation into a different language. Uh, let's say you want to have two different uh, language translation sub tiers. Well, you might want to start adding a gloss and using a particular interlinear gloss. Then you could add GLS or gloss here and then have a new sub tier. And if you're using Mondadon system, you can add any number of new sub tiers for particular participants and then the actions that they're engaged in just to make sure that they are uh, uh, as a new phenomena as you're transcribing and transcribing as it emerges, then you can start to uh, go back and pin that down whenever a particular action is uh, relevant. So uh, that's some of the tools available for editing um, the transcript. And what you should, of course, be doing is making checkpoints. You'll see we have quite a few changes now that we've done uh, here that we haven't made a checkpoint for. And that uh, we can make one now, or it might have been best to make one for the smaller changes so that they could be tracked better. We also have auto backups. There are backups because we haven't saved, so it's giving us a backup every five minutes or so. Um, and uh, we could just save. Uh, and of course, then we could say, well, I want somebody else to work on this transcript. So what I can do is uh, export it as a project or just as the transcript and then have somebody else take a look at it and then they can make changes and make checkpoints to track the changes they made and send it back and there is a tutorial about doing that to sharing transcripts and working on them. Okay, it's been a lot to go through and I've done that quite speedily uh, showing off some of the ways to work on uh, doing transcription in the nth, nth uh, time through so where you go over and over and over again and the types of resources that will help you do that.